Hey everybody, my name's Sam. And I'm Angela, and welcome to our channel. Welcome back to our mobile home renovation. We are currently in our boys' room, and we are ready to rock and roll on this project and start finishing the drywall, applying compound, or, as you say, mud! <laughs> Let's do some mud! All right, between the two of us, we kind of have the parts of the job that we're interested in. I think you are more about cover up the screw holes and make sure they're all good. Mm -hmm. Whereas I am probably gonna be more about the actual joints and seams. Mm -hmm. So. And corners. And corners. So for that, we have pretty much two sets of tools. Yours and mine, mine and yours. I and have a little paddle. He has a big paddle. <laughs> so we have our own sets of tools and we're gonna go ahead and just jump in as we get a little bit comfortable with our technique because we have not done drywall finishing in a long time. We'll stop and maybe give you some pointers or let you see the madness. Otherwise, we need a little bit to catch up and refresh our minds on exactly what it is we're doing. Right. <laughs> so, see you in a second or two or maybe a minute. We are just about done with our first coat of everything here in the bedroom and I want to take a second to show you guys the pieces we're using for the inside corners and I have one piece I'm going to use for the outside corner above the windows. This is corner bead and this is a style that is both metal and paper. It's got the name Clark Dietrich stamped on it so maybe that's the name brand or company. It's my first time I've ever used this. It was more expensive than the traditional corner bead that's metal or vinyl that you then nail or screw into place. And I chose this because I thought the corners are already 
fragile and if I did a corner bead that I had to then nail or screw in even more I was really afraid I was going to bust up the drywall and corners whereas this seems like a pretty cool medium between the traditional paper method of jointing the boards together plus has the metal inside as well so far it's going pretty good we are doing our fourth inside corner right now Angela's actually taken over and she's done the two on that side of the room I think they look very very good so I'm happy to let her continue on that way I've been applying the rest of the synthetic woven tape on all the joints and we'll begin to mud those next here above the windows and then also put up this outside corner bead up there as well. So I just want to touch base and let you guys know this is the corner bead we're using. Um, also tell you what our tape is we've got. Um, I like the self-adhesive mesh because it is very easy to apply. You can stick it up there by itself and kind of allows you to work in stages and chunk things out. And I also like that this stuff is um, mold and mildew resistant as well. So great. Not that we ever expect or plan on this place molding or mildewing. It's kind of cool to have that additional feature, whereas we may not have it with just plain paper. Um, as far as the joint compound, we are using a regular blue lid compound. Um, there are several different types. And I can't really tell you what each one is. I'm sure Google out there can tell you so much more than me. But we are using the blue lid, kind of general purpose joint compound for this. It's actually what's left over from when we did our kitchen and dining room about a year and a half ago. And it has stored and kept very well. So, hey, one less thing we have to buy. Oh, hey everybody. Um, yeah, so you caught us. It has obviously been some time since our last clip, and truth be told, it's probably been about four days. Drywall finishing is something we are not very good at. We have only really done one or two other projects that involved this level of drywall finishing, so it has taken us some time to learn and fix our mistakes and relearn and kind of get okay enough to be all right with the finish that we're getting in here. Um, a little addition to our toolkit has been a lot more drywall tools. Uh, we found some of the ones were not useful at that point. And so rather than fight with the wrong size tool or the wrong type, I've just been going to the hardware store and getting that tool as I need it or this one as we need it. The biggest tool that we bought that has been a lifesaver is this guy. It is an inside corner trowel or drywall knife. It allows you to get smooth consistent finishes on two faces which is inside of these corners. This tool has hands down been the best one that I've purchased as far as saving my sanity and making a nightmare job so much easier. Before I picked up this inside corner tool, I was doing a left side of a corner, waiting a day, and then doing the right side, but I still had ridges or variances with the drywall compound in the corner. Now that I've got this thing, these corners are nice and even and consistent, and I was able to do both sides in one day. With the exception of the inside corner tool, what we also picked up is a flexible four inch regular straight knife. The flexibility of this one is, has been helpful for Angela as she's gone through and done the screw holes and other kind of small patchwork. Um, it allows her to not tear the paper as easily. One of these stiff knives like this one, while no doubt is very durable and really good quality, um, if you get a little excited, you can tear the drywall paper and then you have another area to patch. And if you tear that one, you got more. So. This was a cheap little pickup that I got from our local hardware store. Maybe like three bucks, but has been well worth it. And she really enjoys it. So she wanted me to make sure to mention this. The flexible four inch knife is great. So I guess at this point I have the tools I need because I've done every kind of joint type and I'm happy with the results. So I'll go ahead and share with you guys what we have. We have the three and a half by four and a quarter drywall inside corner tool. That's what this guy is. We then have a four inch taping knife or a drywall knife, or I guess you'd call it a scraper. Remember this one's flexible. We then have an eight inch drywall knife. This one is also a little bit flexible, so that is good. 
and then we have a 12 inch drywall knife. Now, I show you all this to you and I forgot one other one, so hang on just a second. The other one to show is a six inch knife. So, my goodness, Sam, do you have enough drywall knives there? Well, with these joints between the drywall boards, like these big horizontal stripes you see behind me, I have found it's best to start with four inch, do your compound, wait a day, six inch, do your compound, wait a day, eight inch, compound, wait a day, 12 inch, compound, and wait a day. This allows you to build up the manufactured divot that's in between these two boards where they join with the right amount of compound, the right thickness, and at the right amount, I guess, for the best results. And so far we've done all the work in here with zero sanding and zero cleanup. So that's really good, especially for us. Real quick about the drywall pan you see us using. It's plastic and has these little metal rails in the top. I don't like these. I would much rather have had just a solid metal pan. I used to have one, but who knows where that thing has gone. Um, I, at this point, we're just kind of invested with these plastic ones with the metal strips. So that's why you're gonna see us keep using them. But if I was doing this over again, I would get an all metal pan. Mainly because the differences between the metal strip and the plastic, there's a little bit of a lip there because you need it for the manufacturing reasons and for the plastic to hold the metal. The drywall compound gets stuck in these areas and will dry on you. And then if you go to clean your knife off aggressively, you can pull some of that dried compound back into your knife, spread it, and now you've got crumbles in your mud and it causes problems. So, I don't like these. I don't recommend these pans. So, if I put a link to the stuff down below, you're gonna send me a link, a metal pan, and that's why. There is a look at all of our drywall finishing tools. I am down to the small little bits in here, although we still have to do some inside corner trim at this bay window um, up above. For whatever reason, we have been avoiding that, probably because of the big gaps and the annoyances that it's gonna cause. But we're at the point where that's holding up the rest of this room, so that's what I'm gonna do today.
Overall, things are going pretty good here in the bedroom, and I would say that we are very, very close to being done with the finishing in here, barring the few little places that I just did, but overall, pretty good in the bedroom. I wanna talk for a second about drywall compound. If you will have noticed or followed our channel, we did a community post where we kinda of complained that drywall compound was not available for us in the store at the time, and we found a smaller bucket that was much more expensive, this is what we picked up. It is DAP name brand wallboard joint compound. This is junk. That joint compound does okay for screw holes, but for any kind of wide seams and anything, we had nothing but problems out of it. It's probably about halfway used and the rest of it's going in the trash. Although I'll probably recycle the bucket and I don't know, plant something in it. We then checked with our local mom and pop hardware store and they thankfully had some joint compound in stock, albeit small little buckets. So we picked up some of this. It is USG brand, sheetrock brand. So USG sheetrock brand plus three joint compound. I am not a joint compoundologist and there are many different types when they were all available in the store. Some had green lids, some had blue, some had dark blue, light blue, red. So I don't know what exactly works best, but I can tell you for this application doing our walls, the plus three with the, I don't know, Crayola blue lid is very good. We have not had problems with it drying really quick on us and forming crumbs and then dragging it through our joints. And we have not had problems with it plopping on the floor or running so we're happy with it we have gone through about two of these just for what we've done so far and we're probably gonna have to pick up a third to final finish everything out while it's more expensive than the big five gallon buckets these little what is this a 3.5 quart so not even a gallon these little buckets are really handy for applications and projects like what we're doing here it enables us to buy it for eight dollars nine dollars and apply it and if we don't use it all we're not wasting a ton and if we do use it we can go get another little bucket to finish out welcome back to yet another day here in the bedroom doing drywall finishing it has been probably about four days since we last shot a video with you guys not a whole lot has changed visually but behind the scenes, I've been putting on coats, waiting 24 hours, prepping, sanding if need be, actually not, and then putting on more coats, waiting, more coats, waiting, more coats and waiting, and then some more coats and even more waiting. What I want to show you guys today is our method or methods for finishing out drywall. Now, we have the traditional sanding block with drywall sandpaper. This is 150 grit. I use this, it is horribly dusty, but I will use this in certain areas that need a little more finesse work than what we would normally use or use something else for. Now for 98% of the places, we don't have to use the sandpaper. And for our finishing technique, we use a bucket of water and a sponge. This is actually the same sponge we used to finish out the kitchen and dining room drywall, which has been about a year and a half ago. So, hey, Obviously the uh, foams don't go anywhere as long as you clean them out good store them in your workshop You can use them later Here we are at one section of a wall that I want to show you our technique with I have the sponge here I dipped it in the water and wrang out most of the water. It is damp, but it is not dripping So fine little medium there to do this with the sponge is really easy I don't really consider it needing much technique or skill basically you want to take it against the wall I like to use circular fashions, kind of rub it down, you know, give it a sponge bath, and just work out any kind of imperfections and irregularities with the wall and where you apply the joint compound. Now, let me grab my light. If you don't have a work light and you have a smartphone, you can always use this or a regular flashlight. Put it against the wall and it will highlight for you where you need to do some work, whether with removing material with your sponge or adding more and building back up with a larger knife a little bit later. So I'm just gonna work through this area, have my light up here, rubbing it down. When I feel like the sponge gets a lot of drywall compound caked on it or starts to dry out, 
I'll dip it in the bucket, rinse it out a few times, reload it with water, and go back at it on the wall. This is a pretty basic technique. It is zero dust, obviously, but you will have to change your water out and get your hands wet a little bit as you do this, but overall, that's not too bad. You don't have to wear a respirator with this, so that's definitely a win. So yes, I showed you guys how to use the sponge and sponge bath your walls, but I ended up using the sander. In my case, it is so much faster and you get a lot more done. Just put the respirator on, put the fan in the window and have at it. You're gonna make a mess and I wouldn't recommend this if you're trying to patch an area or you didn't have a window to just blow all or most of the dust out of the room. But if you can, this is so much faster. It gives a better job and you should be careful because it will take off a lot with a very little minimal amount of effort but for a room this size to get everything I mean I think I was looking at maybe like 15 minutes and I'm done versus just sponging those two walls was about 15 minutes in and of itself and they still weren't perfect so in my case same paper was the fastest best way but I wanted to show you guys the sponge bath water method as well as sanding It's off right now. We'll go take a break. Well, guys, we have finally reached another milestone. This one <laughs> took us, I think, a week and a half, almost two weeks. I can, I guess, I could go back and look at the clips and put down here below how long it really took in reality. But I don't know. I feel like it took forever. It is what feels like a time wasting type thing. Just it really. It, yeah. It eats up so much time to do. Yeah, you can only put maybe an hour worth of work and then you're done for the day. I mean, cool if you don't want to get a lot of work done and you're, you know, on that side of the spectrum, but we are like, go, 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 let's get it done, look at some progress. I don't want to just see more white stuff on top of the white stuff, so. So what was your take or thoughts from drywall finishing? Um, I was able to only help a little bit, kind of doing the screw heads, that type thing. But this has kind of been Sam's area of major work. <laughs> so off camera, Angela did talk to me and she's like, I don't like this part of the project because I can't do anything. And sorry, it's kind of one of those things. It is. But that is over. This is done. And trust me, I will pull you into the next stage because <laughs> that is something that I don't have a lot of fun doing called painting yeah although if we think historically the way this channel's gone i was the one that painted the greenhouse i was the one that painted the soap shed Ugh, things are not looking good for me might be one painting in here too i will totally help all right you guys heard it you have to hold your feet to the fire if you don't want to help we're gonna have to as always there are links to the tools and stuff things that i used or we used in this video down below if you're interested remember we're not professionals but we do like to share and show you that with enough time and effort and work you could probably do this yourself too i mean we did it so there's hope well thanks guys for watching leave us a comment below we love to read them and otherwise we'll see you guys next time on the homestead see ya bye
two faces, which is inside of these corners, and that had. I want to say this is also a natural sponge, not a synthetic one. No, I lied. It smells like a camper mattress. Both sides in one day. So. I'm here by myself and I just heard a noise in the kitchen. A little bit freaked out. It's okay. The windows are open. Maybe it's the cat. So I don't know if... Okay. I don't know what I don't know. Nothing ever easy. Oh yeah, and here's another one, so it's thousands. So here's the list of all the tools. No, this isn't a list. Hi, I'm holding the list. We were in the store the other day. Okay, we were in the store like every day. I guess this is about two weeks ago. Well, I talked about a drywall compound and tools and how I don't like the tools and I didn't like the drywall compound. Showed a little bit about the joint stuff. So I guess that's it for this one. We'll let all this stuff dry and probably wait another day.